Hey guys, Supercoach God here, and today we are talking pods. Are you struggling to find a point of difference in your team? Well, I'm going to tell you the good ones. I'm not really going to talk about the bad ones, so I think you're going to be bad. I'm going to talk about the good ones. Actually, I might talk about a couple of bad ones, but anyway, we'll get into it. Firstly, we're trying to get a thousand subs before round one, so that is Thursday. I believe it's seven twenty game. So. Or maybe 740, I don't know. But anyway, get on to that. Um, we are like 47 subs away. It's insane. Uh, and yeah, so we'll get into it. I'm also going to be doing a team update. So stay tuned for that. That will be at the end. I'll talk a few about a few of my changes. I know I did my final team reveal, but the struggle's real. I'm telling you now. You just hear news after news after news, and then everything changes, and it's just knowing we shouldn't be so reactionary, but we just, that's just our tendency, isn't it? So we'll get right into it. So the first pod, well, I, I say pods 10% or under. So probably Dan Brosio. Remember also percentages haven't really updated much recently. So it's a bit of a, we're guessing who the pods are, but anyway, Dan Brosio. So I, I think this can work. I do. I really do. Um, am I starting him? No, I'm not going to start him. But he is a, a definite option in that back line if you don't want to start uh, two rookies. So you, if you're picking D'Ambrosio, you're picking Williams and three primos. Maybe two. I mean, you could, but that's a bit risky. So three primos and you have Williams, D'Ambrosio and one other rookie on field. Um, so yeah, you probably get a better score in that back line, but you got, you got to remember there's, um, there are other options in other lines, other cheaper players um, that could make you bank. So I, I do think it can work. He's playing the half back role, especially for the first six weeks or whatever um, before people start coming back. So, yeah, um, Dan Houston, I don't think he'd be a pod now, but he's only 10% owned according to this. And, yeah, he's he's a good pick. I actually like him over Stewart now just because he's 40K cheaper and he allows to um, actually get other players in other lines. Am I picking? I'm not picking him but he hasn't been in many versions of my team, many versions of my team. So yeah, do I do like the Dan Houston pick, especially because he has like seven or seven out of his first 10 at um, Adelaide Oval. Next we've got, okay. I'm going to tell you flat out my opinion and on Elliot Yo. The pick will not work. It will not work. You are just trying to find a cheaper option that is still around that 450K mark because you don't want to go down to a 200K player and spend another 200K in another line. You want a, like that f fourth, fifth primo in that back line. That is why you're picking him. And I'm telling you now, he's not going to be a primo. It's as simple as that. I could not stress it anymore. Uh, if you're picking him, good luck. Um, but yeah, not for me at all. So next we've got, I do think Nasai Wanganee Malira can work. I do think he can work. Um, less injury prone for one, played the 23 games last year. So only missed the one, which I can't remember what that was for, but... Um, yeah, because they played a finals game. And, yeah, I think you look at his back half of last year and it's very um, very promising. Uh, definitely started to perform well in that role. Uh, can he up his game to the next level? Not 100% sure, but, uh, yeah, he, he does seem like a potential pick as a pod. I don't mind it. Uh, next, we've got... 
Buderic. So Buderic can work. It can work. It's just the price. It's it's a bit of an awkward price for me. I re- I've had him in plenty of teams in the past, but just way too awkward for me. Way too awkward. Uh, Jaden Short. Now, I've seen a lot of teams picking Jaden Short. And the reason I wouldn't pick him, the reason I wouldn't pick him is his buy. So he, who does he share a buy with? Um, I find this. I don't know how to find it, but um, he shares a buy with a team where we've got plenty of players. I, I don't know what it is. I've, I've looked into it. I can't remember. Uh, how I was, what I was thinking, but I don't really like the Jane and Short pick. Um, it can work though. I'm sorry, that was a really shit explanation, but yeah, it's just what you're gonna have to get, I guess. <laughs> um, well, uh, Luke Ryan can work, can work. Uh, would have worked last year if you picked him as a pod, so could work again this year, 100%. Uh, 3% owned is probably unders on what he should be. But the price for me is just too much, I think. So good luck if you're picking him. Christian Salem wouldn't go near him. Um, who else? Whitfield's another one. We'll talk about Whitfield, and that's about it, really. So Whitfield's 520K. Uh, he's, he could work. Got the 108 in the Collingwood game. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that's the... I think that's over somewhat he'll average. He'll probably average around, he might average the 100 marks, so he might get a nice price rise. So it could definitely work. He could eat, but he could also average 93 like he did last year. Had a couple of games injured, but yeah. Uh, I would not, I, I, actually, I don't mind it. If you wanted to pick Whitfield, I'd, I'd understand. It's just the extra buy for me. It's just, uh, Pods and extra buys don't work well together. Uh, midfield. So the pods in the midfield. Uh, Ollie Wines is. I'm not calling Ollie Wines a pod, I, but I, I don't. I'm one of the rare people who don't really like wines. Um, especially in the Discord, I don't really like it. But you can go wines. You can go wines, but I don't really like. There's definitely upside, but I think there's the thing is with wines is you're going to use him as an upgrade target. He's not going to be a premium. Whereas if you pick a steel, you're banking on the fact he's going to be a premium, which I think is a better option. Same with Took. Like I know he's the like that extra 70, 80k more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Uh, John Newcomb. Uh, he, I'll probably just add ones because I just talked to him about him for a while. Um, John Newcomb is 550k. I, I'm not picking this player. There's no way. There's no, there's just better options at the price. Took and steal, just better options. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see him improving, uh, extraordinarily more than he did la- uh, last year. Um, Sarong can work. LDU can work. I don't know if I need to speak much on these players, to be honest. There, LDU just had a terrible pracky game. He was in my team, straight out, straight out. As soon as I saw that, I'm not, I'm not touching that. No way. Um, Sarong can work. He's got the mid time. Crouch, no, I'm no, no, I'm not going near Crouch. I'm not going near Crouch. Bonner, he's interesting. I would. Who George was saying, I think he averages 80, he says he averages 80, 85. I don't see him averaging 80, 85, but um, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Uh, I'd probably be more likely to go a Lions or a Berry over him, which are probably here. Yeah, Sam Berry's here. Um, don't touch lead. Libba can work. Libba Libba's one that can work. So, so Sam Berry, he's um he played really well in the pracky game. 
but does the role hold up? The thing with the lad is he's playing more forward time to allow more mid time for the young younger players, which includes Barry. So it definitely can work. But will it? No, let's be real. I don't think it works. But and Liba is just a beast. I don't know if he averages one sixteen this year though. Um Parrish is injured. It's going no. It's probably it. It's probably all that needs to be talked about. Rux, so if we go pods, I mean I count English as a pod. I'd count Marshall as a pod and Sherry as a pod. So these three, they can all work. I I I wouldn't be surprised if they probably won't all work, probably two of the three. Sherry will increase in price. We know this. We know he will, but would you rather start a Grundy who's gonna average 10, 15 more in his head and for an extra 80k? I I reckon so. And Marshall, um, I think he's too expensive. I think we've got the cheaper players there, like a, a Grundy and Gorn, who are underpriced. I don't think Marshall's underpriced at all. And then English, he's overpriced. So, yeah, that's just my logic with it. Uh, if we go forwards, I mean, how much money do we have left? Oh, we're going to have to remove some. Yo can go. And Crouch can go. Right, forwards, some pods. Who's a pod in the in the four wheel? I would not pick Shy Bolton. I'm sorry, I just wouldn't. I can't see the upside. I don't think he improves on average at all. So, Kerno, don't go near key forwards. We're actually just gonna get rid of Newcomb and Wines. Um, I don't go near key forwards. If that's your cup of tea, then fair enough, but not for me. Who else? There's a few others in here. Elijah Sardis could be an interesting one. Uh, I'm not really knowledgeable on Sardis. I haven't really looked at him. I just don't really want to pick him with... Uh, there could be job security issues as well. Um, Dusty could be back this week. Still wouldn't go near him. Rankin's one that I wouldn't go near either. Just doesn't... I don't think he averages enough. Um, to make it worthwhile. It sounds like he's going to get a bit more midfield time, but who who really, really knows? Um, Caleb Daniel, no. Adam's injured. Likey, no. Uh, Chuck Ginevan, hell no. What the hell? So Heaney, it says 3%. I reckon it's actually about 18, 18 20%. I reckon they're capping maybe 15%. I don't know, but they they haven't updated ownership yet. So, but we'll talk about him, I guess. So he's obviously got the 144, as you can see here, but people are going to start coming back, slowly coming back. I, I don't see him averaging more than Jackson in the first six weeks. It's as simple as that. I don't see him averaging more than Flanders in the next six weeks. So why would I? Why would you go ahead and be Heaney unless you have three? You're putting three primos in that forward line. Then I'd pick Heaney, but I'm not doing that. So I'm not going to pick him. I know a lot of people that are, but not for me. All right. So that 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 was the pods part of the video. Now I'm going to show you my team update. And there's a couple of changes, and I'm going to explain them. I think I have a pretty good memory of what my team was two days ago. So we're going to explain them. And, yeah, let's get into it. Let's refresh, and it should come up. Bang. This is the team. And, in fact, we're going to go like this. We're going to click this, and it looks – oh, that looks nice. Shout out to – um. Was it Hammy who made it? I think so. I don't, Hammy from the Discord. Uh, if it was someone else as well, just correct me. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We're just going to quickly minimize this. This is way too big. 
All right, there's the team. So first thing is I've changed my structure a little bit. I had four primo backmen. Now I have three. I had one primo forward. Now I have two. That is the structure change. I also had, so I had Stuart and did I have Took? I think I'd Stuart instead uh, instead of uh, as an extra primo in that back line, and I had Took over Green. I think that's right. And then I also had Naismith on the bench. I did not have Lazaro. I had Sharp, but I didn't know he was injured. Um, I had I might have had like Manor in the. I had Wilson and Sexton on field, didn't have Jackson, had Manor on the bench as well. So the, the teams had a little bit of a makeover, you can say. And I love the team that I'm looking at right now. I absolutely love it. And some some people probably don't. They probably think, oh, where, why, why are you picking Jackson? Why? Why? So if you haven't heard, he, Darcy's out for six to eight weeks. And who knows, it could be more. There's this, there's some people that think this Reedy guy is going to come in. He's a 120, 124K um, Frio Ruckman who played really well in the waffle. But Jackson just got... He's, I guarantee even if Reedy plays, he gets 40. He gets 40 to 50 CB, percent CBAs, and that's enough for him to score well. If he doesn't play, he gets like 70, 80. So he, I'm I'm locking in Jackson, I think now, um, which means I can't go Naismith, and I'll tell you why. So Livingston's got the mid-forward status. You can move Livingston into a uh, swap Livingston with Jackson when Gorn and Grundy have their buys. And so you can have two rucks on field. And then you just, and then you can just, and, and we have a loophole now. Like, so beneficiary, especially because I think Nank comes back in one to two weeks anyway. He might not even have a price rise, Nate Smith, because Nate Smith or Nank can't play forward. So you're going to have to keep Ryan in the team um, and Cozzy. So I don't know. It's just, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, also Lazaro, I do like the scoring potential. He hasn't been in my team all preseason, but I had the extra cash. I thought, how can I use this? I'm going to go to a Lazaro. So I got a pretty hefty bench there, but I think a lot of people have that hefty bench now. Oh, a bit of voice crack. Mm. Um, and I've also added Caulfield in the backline rookies. And I think Caulfield can still average a 65. I, I'm not putting, or a 70. That's not out of the question. At all, I don't think. So, look, I'm really happy with this team. I've also got... So, I've got Roberts on field instead of Husway. Just Roberts scoring potential. I think he's more... Cons- he'll be a more consistent scorer on the halfback line compared to Husway. Midfielders can have very low ceiling games on the odd occasion. Um, and if Husway fails, we can always correct him. Like, imagine if Husweight fails and Berry works. You just swap the two, like, for example. So, that's the team. I've still got Jack Steele. I'm not t- I'm not moving Jack Steele from M4. That is locked and loaded. But I think this team, I don't think I'm going to change it. I think this is an elite team. Unless crazy news comes out, this is my team. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, remember to subscribe. We're trying to get a thousand subscribers in what? Really like two days now. It's pretty much two days. So we need like with 47 subs in two days. That's what? 20, 23 and a half subs a day. So you've been killing it recently with a sub burn as well. So thank you so much. But anyway, hope you all have a good one. And cheese.